Hey guys, my name is Joanna, also known as Just Another Flutist here on YouTube, and I have partnered up with the Flute Center of New York to bring you guys monthly flute review videos. Before we jump into today's review, I need to let you guys know about a couple of perks. If you use my code JAF to purchase a flute through the Flute Center of New York, you get one, free domestic shipping within the US. Two, an extended 10 day trial, usually it's only seven days. Three, you get an extended 18 month warranty on your new flute. And number four, you can take up to three instruments out on trial at a time. Just to be transparent, I do earn a small commission on each flute that is purchased through the Flute Center of New York using this code JAF. Now you probably noticed that I mentioned trials. Yes, you can take flutes out on trial before you purchase them. You just need to contact the Flute Center of New York directly by email or phone. And when you do so, just make sure to give them my code JAF so you get all the perks. I will put a link to their contact page that has all of their contact info in the info box down below. If you do request to take flutes out on trial, just make sure that you're actually in the market to buy. It's really no use to try a flute if you're not actually going to buy a flute. Also, the Flute Center of New York actually does price match with any other authorized dealer of the flutes that they sell. So you'll always know that you're getting the best bang for your buck. Now, when you actually go to try these flutes, I need you guys to remember a few things. Number one, take off all rings and dangly jewelry that can potentially scratch the flutes. Never use the polishing cloth, the swabbing gauze, or the cleaning rod that comes with each new flute because they are not yours yet. And lastly, just a quick disclaimer, every flutist plays each flute differently. Like in Harry Potter, just as the wand chooses the wizard, so the flute chooses the flutist. I'm just here to describe to the best of my ability how these flutes like to be played, but it is up to you to decide for yourself if you actually match these flutes. Today we are looking at one silver flute with two different head joints. And I thought I might as well just kind of read the specs to you guys now before we jump into it. The flute we are looking at today is a Brandon Brothers handmade flute. They call this the Broger flute. It comes with a sterling silver 0.925 hand cut Brandon head joint. This flute has a sterling silver body and mechanism, Broger mechanic and Broger acoustic. I will talk about that in a little bit. Soldered silver tone holes, silver rings, ribs and posts, French open hole model, pointed key arms, white gold springs, Straubinger pads, 0.016 tubing, offset G, C sharp trill key, D sharp roller, B foot joint, A equals 442, handmade in the USA. Let's now look at the two head joints that we're gonna be looking at. The first one we'll be looking at is the Brandon Cooper hand cut head joint, 1585 gold silver alloy tube. So this means that the tube itself, is actually a mix of two metals, 15% gold and 85% silver. Very, very cool if you ask me. It has a 14 karat gold lip plate, 14 karat gold riser, silver crown, 0 0.016 tubing, modified Cooper style, handmade in the USA. The second one we'll be looking at is another Brandon Cooper hand cut head joint. This time it has a sterling silver, which is 0.925, tube. This one also has a 14 karat gold lip plate and riser, silver crown, 0 0.016 tubing, modern Cooper style, handmade in the USA. So the only real difference between these two head joints is the actual metal of the tube. One is 15% gold and 85% silver. The other one is sterling silver. I wanted to use these two head joints to really showcase the subtle differences that professionals can feel from head joint to head joint. You'll also notice that these head joints have the 14 karat gold lip plate and riser that is very, very popular among professionals. So I thought that you guys would like to see that in this very kind of professional review. Now, let's talk about what this Broger mechanic and Broger acoustic is. I will put a link to Brandon's website to the exact page where they describe these two things. Basically, the Broger mechanic is a pinless mechanism. If you watched my Miyazawa video, I did talk a little bit more about what a pinless mechanism is, so you can go check that video out if you don't know already. Typical flutes are called the BEM style flutes. Theobald BEM was a flute maker from the way back when. I actually have a very popular book that was written by him called The Flute and Flute Playing. Here it is. This flute that was developed in this time had pins in it. However, within the last century, the Broger mechanic was developed as a pinless mechanism. This pinless mechanism has a few pretty cool features. One is it's actually really sturdy. And fun fact, it is actually heavier than a pin mechanism because they actually have more parts that kind of interlock with each other. If you were to actually drop this flute, it will actually suffer less damage than a pinned mechanism would. This broker mechanic also allows you to fiddle with the exact tension and resistances of each individual key. You can actually just get it customized to however you 
want it to feel. There are of course many other benefits to the Broger Mechanic, so go check out that page to learn more about it. As for the Broger Acoustic, according to Brandon's website, the Broger Acoustic is simply a different way of shaping the inside of tone holes. Some flutists find that this creates a more free-blowing kind of flute, and it helps even the tone out across all the notes, especially over the break, which is around C, C sharp, D. Now here's the thing. I actually own a Brandon flute. These videos are meant to be a true review of these flutes and how they actually play. I'm not going to tell you, this is the best brand, get this one. This is a bad brand don't get this one. These videos are not about that. These videos are really just, these are how these flutes play. Let's see if it works for you. I have to admit to you guys, when I am reviewing other flutes for these flute reviews, sometimes it can be pretty difficult for me because some of these flutes don't play in a way that is natural for me. But this flute, I felt like I was playing a sibling of my own flute. I'm not saying in this video that Brannon actually fits everyone. Brannon fits me though. I figured that I need to put that out there as a disclaimer so you guys know why I might sound particularly good on these flutes that I'm reviewing today. I also noticed that the serial number on this is what? 8437. My own flute, 6526. Now you guys know how long ago I got my flute. Yes. All right, so now let's talk about the packaging of this particular flute. I was expecting the same exact flute case that I got my flute in. My flute came in a very typical French flute case model. You got the, your two little buttons here, they slide and then you can open it. But what I got in the mail though from the Flute Center of New York was not what I was expecting at all. Look at this monstrosity. Look how big this is. This thing is massive. I was just like, holy crap, this thing is so big. Did the Flute Center of New York accidentally send me an alto flute? Beautiful logo, by the way. Stitching is amazing. I love the fact that they made the zipper so that it goes all the way around the back. It can flip open without it getting caught on the side here. In the cover, you will find beautiful wooden cleaning rod. There is also a shoulder strap in here. Here's an interesting thing I found. You see this? These are keys. I was like, excuse me, why are there keys? And this is when I found out that when you take out the case, it looks like this. Okay, again, this is very unconventional. This is hard plastic. They ain't nothing gonna happen to your flute underneath. I would say it's like a third thicker than my old one. The way that you open this case is by pushing this button and it unlocks it. You see all this amazing padding in here? It's actually soft. All of this is malleable. It's amazing. I've never seen that in a flute case before. This is all malleable in here. Look how spaced out the flute is from itself. There are many flute cases out there where like the tip of your head joint is actually touching the G sharp key. That is nowhere close. Now, how does this key work? You can lock this baby. You poke in the key with the side of the key that has the little ridges facing the outside. To lock it, you go counterclockwise until you hear a click. Now, when you do this, as hard as you can, you try to push this, it ain't budging. It's completely locked. Then if you want to unlock it, you go clockwise instead until you hear a click. And then it unlocks. I can see how some people will think to themselves, oh, but that doesn't look as professional. You know what I think? It doesn't matter how professional your case looks if your flute gets smashed. I think this is way more practical for a super professional flute that is super expensive. You want the case to be indestructible. The other thing that you'll find in here is your microfiber polishing cloth. I don't know if I should be asking this, but I, I want this case for my own flute because I have a Brannon and I would love to have a case like this for my Brannon. Mm. Now let's get to talking about how these flutes actually play. The first one we'll be playing around with is the one with the 1585 tube. This was really interesting for me to finally articulate into words how I play 
a Brandon flute. The visualization that I have is that there is a balloon in your mouth. It's like the balloon animal type of balloons, you know, those really, really long ones. What you want to imagine is that one end of that balloon is tucked behind your bottom front teeth. You almost want to feel like it's just kind of like tucked into the front of your jaw. And the other end of the balloon is tucked into the top of your mouth. I say top of the mouth because it doesn't just stay in the roof of your mouth. The absolute lowest note makes me feel that the top of that balloon is actually vibrating against my top lip. It's placed on the inner rim of my top lip, so it's not quite like all the way out here. And as I go higher and higher, that end of the balloon gets shifted further and further back. So it's always against the top of my mouth. So as you go past the teeth, it will be on the roof of your mouth. And it just keeps going backwards as you go higher. Now, usually I talk about this idea of like a ball of spinning air in your mouth for many flutes. You don't necessarily feel that on a Brannon actually, which is why I thought it was such a novel idea when I tried other flutes. But the thing is, I do notice that you definitely feel that top end of the balloon vibrating against the roof of your mouth. I think that is the Brandon's version of the spinning air. It's actually happening quite up top, but you still need to keep your mouth quite open this way so that you have room for the bottom end of the balloon to be tucked in the front of your jaw. So now let's play around with some harmonics. If you follow this inflatable balloon way of playing, you'll be able to pop out the harmonics no problem. If you have watched my recent practice with me video, I was practicing harmonics on my own Brannon, but I had trouble getting the fifth harmonic out when I was warming up. And I mentioned that I needed to lift the roof of my mouth. I needed to basically play with the back of the roof of my mouth for it. Now I know why. It's this inflatable balloon idea. Using this way of playing, I can easily pop out the sixth harmonic and I can sometimes get the seventh harmonic out. Now I think the reason why it's so difficult for me to get those top harmonics out on C is because that top end of the inflatable balloon has to go so far back in my mouth. I'm a small person, therefore I have smaller features than most people. If my mouth is smaller, then the length of the roof of my mouth is also smaller. That's why I feel like I have to shoot it from almost from my throat for the highest notes. That is my suspicion for now, but stay tuned for when I try the next head joint. Now let's play with tone color. You're playing with that inflatable balloon again. This time you widen the balloon. So this way, not this way into your mouth. Widen the balloon for a rich chocolatey tone. This is quite the revelation for me because I always tried to teach my students in my earlier years of teaching how to make this rich chocolatey tone using this method. Now I know it doesn't actually work on every single flute out there. So I'm sorry, my first few students. And conversely, if you want a thinner, more hollow tone, you narrow that balloon down. Obviously you will be playing with more than just two tone colors, but I was trying to go for the extremes of tone color. The feeling of narrowing down this balloon gets more pronounced the higher you go. And I think it's just because that balloon is elongating. So there's actually just more for you to feel. And when you're thinning out the tone for lower notes, you just kind of feel like you're squashing everything into a point because it's all very forward, right? So that balloon is not very long. It just kind of feels like a ball of air really in the front of your mouth. Now let's play with the mechanism.
Thanks to the Broker Mechanic, the mechanism is buttery smooth. It's light, but with a little bit of resistance. I like that because it feels more controlled while still being light. It, it's like a nice in-between. But if you don't like it that way, you can always get it adjusted. On other flutes, these C-Trill keys tend to be more resistant than the rest of the mechanism, while the gizmo, the B-flat lever, sometimes the C-sharp trill actually tend to be lighter. So my belief is that on a Brannon, they're trying to even out all the keys, regardless of whether they are main keys or extra keys, like trill keys and stuff like that. It means that you don't have to compensate for keys that are lighter than others or more resistant than others. Now for articulation. <laughs> I find that my tongue is tonguing behind the top front teeth with part of my tongue poking out under the top front teeth. The feeling is more here, but I can feel that part of my tongue is sticking out like that. For double tonguing, I find that the K part of your double tongue can be placed quite further back on this flute than you would normally think would work on other flutes. I place my Ks sort of in the middle of the roof of my mouth and they're so light that I almost feel like I'm muffling them, but it comes out really, really clean. So that just means that your K articulation has to be very, very light. I am guessing this is because that spinning air is right up on the roof of your mouth. So if you articulate too hard, you end up obstructing that lovely resonance you've got going on up there. And now for dynamics. It's the actual length of the balloon that affects how loud or how soft you play. I found that this involves you actually moving your jaw up and down. If you drop your jaw, you'll be able to lengthen that balloon more and it'll actually just give your whole mouth way more room to work with. So you can really pour air into the flute. If you bring your jaw up and you visualize shortening that balloon, then you get a really nice piano. By the time you're looking for a flute in this range, you should already know how to use your lips to manipulate the tuning and stuff like that. So what I'm describing is more of a general overview of how the dynamics work here. Now let's try the same flute, but with the silver head joint. We've got the same inflatable balloon method of playing. However, everything is shifted forward. So now your lowest note will not only feel like it's buzzing or vibrating against your top lip, I feel like it is vibrating the outside of the top of my lip. That's how far forward it is. I also felt that while I was playing with this head joint, my sound just gets thrown out way further. Solid Silver has a really good reputation of projecting very, very well. That makes sense because the other head joint had 15% gold in it. My air also feels like it naturally spins faster with this head joint. So I believe that one, it also contributes to the fact that it projects really well. And two, it actually makes your sound brighter, which also makes sense because the other one with 15% gold will sound a little darker than this head joint. So really it's just a matter of preference of whether you like that super projecting brighter sound or if you like a mellower, darker sound. Now let's play with harmonics. <laughs> talked about how that fifth harmonic and above are actually harder for me to get out. Well, on this head joint, 
it's a lot easier. And I think it's simply because I don't have to reach so far back in my mouth with that inflatable balloon. Everything is shifted forward, so the positions to get those harmonics out are also shifted forward. To me, this confirms that suspicion that I was talking about earlier, which is that it really, I think, just has to do with the fact that my features are small, therefore my mouth is small, therefore the length of the roof of my mouth is also small. If you are bigger than me, you may find that this is a complete non-issue for you. And now for tone color. It's a similar idea to the 1585 head joint. However, you're only focusing on narrowing the top half of the inflatable balloon. I found that if I also narrowed the bottom part of the balloon, it either made my sound completely disappear on lower notes, or it actually made me accidentally crack into harmonics. But for that richer chocolatey tone, it's the same idea, just widen everything up. All right, and now for the mechanism, obviously this is the same body that we're working with, but I knew that you guys would want to hear me play the exact same scales with this different head joint. So here you go. And now for articulation. So we talked about this whole idea that that inflatable balloon has been shifted forward. This also means that your tongue has shifted forward. So now we are doing a pseudo French tonguing. I like to call it a pseudo French tonguing because you're not doing it from between your lips, like, but between your teeth, which is like, you're probably wondering why this is the case. I have found that if your flute likes to play more forward, but you tongue further back in your mouth, it will result in your tonguing sounding like a bunch of thumps, thump. Thump. It'll sound like really hard tongues, no matter how light you try to make your tongue. In these cases, you need to just move the place where you tongue further forward too. You'll find that that will lighten up your tongue quite a bit. For double tonguing, the K is also placed further forward. For me, I feel like I'm articulating those Ks about a fourth to a third the way in on the roof of your mouth. Those Ks also need to be articulated so lightly you feel like you're muffling them, but they come out so clean. And lastly, dynamics. Again, same idea as the 1585. It's all about that jaw movement. Relaxed jaw movement though, okay? You don't ever wanna lock your jaw either. However, on this head joint, I feel like I have more range. I'm guessing it's because I can throw out my fortes way more and like the air just spins faster and therefore I feel like this head joint can take more in terms of how much I pour into it. So the fortes come out louder and I noticed that the pianos tend to have a little bit more zing to them. Again, not a surprise because you're looking at a solid silver versus another one that has 15% gold. All right, and that is it for my review of this beautiful Brandon flute. It felt really good to me to be playing around with this flute. And it was a really nice confirmation for me that I really did choose the flute that chose me. Now you guys are probably wondering how much this thing costs. Please do not be alarmed. We are looking at professional prices here. Without further ado, this Brandon Brothers Sterling Silver Flute costs 
$14,785. We'll just let that sink in. Okay, it's sunken in now, right? Okay, cool. Now we're gonna keep going. The 1585 head joint, if you get it with this flute, which is a sterling silver flute, costs an additional $2,475. Now, if you were to get this 1585 head joint with a full flute, that is also 1585 throughout the entire tubing of the body and the foot, I mean. Then it would cost an additional $1,745. Now, if you were to get this 1585 head joint alone, it would cost $3,960. We got that straight. Now, let us move on to the other sterling silver head joint. With this sterling silver flute, an additional $1,745. If you were to get this head joint alone, it would cost $3,230. I know those prices sound alarming to some of you, but this is the reality of professional flute shopping. And this is why you should always save up before you buy a professional model flute. I hope this review has been insightful and helpful to you guys. Huge thanks to the Flute Center of New York for sending me this beautiful flute to play around with. I still can't really get over how nice it sounds with me. If you have any further questions and comments about this particular flute, put it in the comment section below. If you have requests for future reviews, please let us know in the comments below as well. Not only do I read them, but the Flute Center of New York reads them as well. Make sure you follow the Flute Center of New York on their Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. I'll put all the links to their social media networks down in the info box below as well. And if you like this video, make sure you give me a big thumbs up and hit subscribe for new videos every Saturday. My last video is over there. And if you want to catch me during the week, my social media networks are also down there. And I will see you guys next week. Bye. Hi, my name is Ruth. What's your name? Mm, I don't have a name yet because I haven't found my owner yet. Oh, you haven't found your owner? Have you met my owner? Yeah, she's, she's interesting. Interesting? What do you mean interesting? I don't know. She's kind of weird if you ask me. I mean, she's, she's making us talk to each other.